All right. Okay, welcome Mr. Chandler to our community art no, class. No. I'm going to pass it. Uh, I've introduced Jim, but let me just say again, Jim is a member of the Woodstock Conservation Commission, which is part of the group planning Bucks Ledge. I believe he's been in the project since at least 2008, but I'll let him talk more about that. And he's also involved in several different environmental projects in the area. And as far as like people who are dedicating their time to the environment, you don't get anybody a lot more dedicated than Jim. So I'm gonna pass it to you, Jim, and take it away. Okay. I'm just trying to do one last thing here. Um, my name is Jim Chandler. I live in Woodstock on North Pond. Um, and uh, I'm gonna get out of this one. Probably. I'll go back. I've done a variety of things. I'm, Member of the Woodstock Conservation Commission. I'm president of the May the no, I kill this Skype. President of the Community Lakes Association. And I've been involved with, with this area for quite a quite a long time. Um, I originally got interested in environmental topics because as a kid I I like to watch watch birds, collect collect um, rocks and fossils, um, raise, raise animals and plants and gardens, and uh, take care of the environment in general. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Buck Sledge. Um, Buck Sledge, it's part of my backyard, but also as part of the Woodstock Conservation Commission, we're in charge of looking at the important places in the area and, and trying to protect them. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is show you a diagram of some of the key points and uh, to help you understand it. Oh, um, it says you disable the screen sharing. Oh, Can I you... think I fixed, I've got it. Sorry about that. Screen okay. sharing, always a challenge. Okay, here we go. All right, we are seeing it, thank diagram. you. Okay, yes, we can see that in here, great. Well, a system in this case is the best way to understand an environment, it's a system is a a bunch of parts that work together. You still hearing me well? And Can you just we talk about the Buck Sledge project, but it's Buck Sledge is more than just Buck Sledge. It's Buck Sledge, Lapham Ledge, and Moody Mountain all together. It's roughly 634 acres or so. And here are some of the parts. The, it's made up of rocks, which then it affects the soils. Um, there's water in the area, rainfall, streams, lakes. Uh, it's right next to North Pond. So that's a big part of the uh, Lapham Ledge view. And then the air, all, all work together to create the Bucks Ledge environment. The soils feed and water feed the vegetation. And, and air in the air is carbon dioxide, which also goes to the, to the, to the plants which helps take carbon dioxide out of the air. Wildlife adds carbon dioxide. Um, and some of the factors that affect it is if we look at, we, we have vegetation in the area and one part of the area is a, some of the, some of the soils have a, small areas of rich soils, higher pH. Normally the soils in Maine are acidic soils but for some reason, and I think it's probably because of the rocks. Let me draw that diagram in. Um, let's see. Can't get to my screen here. Okay, there we go. Take an arrow and 
arrow type. Because we have some of the small enriched soils, it creates small areas where it has really unique plants. These are the, the endangered plants. And because it's got this unique set of soils, it creates unique rare plants. We also have forests because of the vegetation, but because of the mountain we have ledges, and ledges, one of the things that can live on the ledges is peregrine falcons. And that makes, that's uh, an important species in the area as well. The last thing that's, that's kind of makes um, Buck Sledge unique is it's got these ledges. And because it's got ledges, it's got lots and lots of different kinds of scenic views from it. Different places, each, each Moody Mountain, Lapham Ledge, and um, Buck Sledge all have good views to different directions that you can see. Another feature in the area is the Woodstock Spring. You might be familiar with the Woodstock. On Route 26, there's a spring where people get water. Well, part of that watershed that feeds that is the, La the Bucks Ledge, Lapham Ledge, and Moody Mountain system. Um, and so that by keeping good vegetation in the area, we have good water, water in the Woodstock Spring. If we were getting a lot of dirt and stuff in the water, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a clean, as clean a water. So those are some of the factors that affect Lapham Ledge. How many, how many more minutes do I have? Uh, you got like 10, Jim, if you want to keep going okay. for your time you want to, then we have some questions so, to ask you. Buck Ledge is a, is, is a unique place. It's, it's uh, in the process, it's been about 15 years trying to protect it. Because it was such a unique area, we thought, and the, the, it used to be part of paper company land. And uh, if we thought that we could buy it for a community forest for the town, that would be a useful place where we could um, have lots of people enjoy and uh, also protect the environment as well. Because again, if we look at the diagram, there's lots of lots of different lots of different parts of the Buck Sledge that make really unique areas. Fifteen years ago, we were able to get a land from a future grant to do it, but the seller didn't want to wanted to sell it for much more money than than the assessment, so we couldn't do it at that time. But in the meantime. We've had students such as yourself, students from the 4-H camp and from the, from the freshman academy come out to the Buck Sledge area and build trails. We even have a trail now that goes all the way down to the Woodstock School. So we're going to be able to try to involve those groups. More recently, we've been able to get a grant now. And this time, the, the seller is willing to, to go for it. It's going to cost about $900,000 in the, in the whole process. Um, $800,000 will purchase the land and the other $100,000 will go to activities that protect the provide, um, monies for maintenance of the property for generations to come. Partners involved in the Woodstock Conservation Commission, the main or the, the Moosic Land Trust, is also going to take care of this property. And also, the Northern Forest Land Center is helping us with the process of setting up a community forest. But we're in the process of trying to raise the money, come up with the plans to forestries and to ecologists, um, and protect this property because it's got really unique features. It's got scenic views, it's got lots of trails peregrine falcons on the ledges. It's got unique rare plants. It helps protect um, the Woodstock Spring. And since the, the vegetation is growing, it's taking carbon dioxide out of the air, which will help us um, prevent climate change. Because if we, 
things get cha change the climate, it's going to adversely affect this whole area um, by changing the temperatures in the water, changing the temperature for the plants and animals, and it would change the whole environment. Any other topics I should touch on? I think we can we can pass some of this to our kiddos who are ready to ask questions. Let me just uh, touch base with them real quick. Where's that paper? I just circled. Yes, I'm gonna circle a couple more. Yes. Okay. I think these two are these are important too. So you just pick any of those. Okay. So we have several kids who are ready to ask some questions now. These questions came from sixth and seventh grade community art students over the last okay. few classes. Um, we brainstormed a bunch of questions and we kind of figured out where there was overlap. So several people wanted to know why you started helping with this project. And I know you kind of talked about like what motivated you, but maybe we can, I'll just, I'll just throw that one out to you because that wasn't circled on our list, but is the okay. most yeah. absolute most asked question of any student was like, why, why, what inspires you to do this? Why do you want to be involved in Buck's Ledge? First okay. of all, it's where I live. It's it's in it's sort of in my backyard, and it's in the town of Woodstock, and then also looking over the whole town and trying to, to identify unique areas. This area, one, it had a big piece of land that we could purchase, whereas a lot of a lot of the land is in small pieces, and also wherever whenever you're driving through Woodstock, a lot of places where you are from the lakes, you can look up and see Bucks Ledge. From Route 26, you can see Bucks Ledge. It's easy to get to. There are lots of scenic views to go with it. And it had some good trails to go with it as well. So it had a lot of good things going for it. So it seemed like th the place to really act um, and, and make a difference in, in the environment. Okay, you guys take it away. Um, I think they want to you know, this is your microphone right I now. Know. Okay. Yep. It's really confusing because that's like camera microphone, but that's where I can see you over there. I know it's a little odd. Um, so I think we decided two and three for the first one, right? Uh, so two and three. Yeah. So we decided to do two or number two and three about about you know your teaching. So I want to ask you what grades of science did you used to teach, and um, what did you enjoy most about teaching those grades? Well, I had a kind of an unusual career, and that I'm retired now, but. For many of my years, I worked in schools, but I worked as a as a, a resource person. I worked for the Oxford County Soil and Water District, and uh, I went to different schools all over the all over the Oxford County, including Bethel. Um, and then, after I worked there, so I was kind of involved with schools from kindergarten to to twelfth grade. After I worked there, I worked for two years at the seventh grade in, in Oxford Hills Middle School. And from there, I got a job at the Auburn School District and I was the consulting teacher in science. So I helped write curriculum for all the different grades, especially kindergarten through sixth grade. And then I ran a, a learning center and kids came to me for field, field trips. We had lots of trails and so forth. So I've been involved with science education primarily kindergarten through 12th grade. But the, the class I taught, specifically that one class was a seventh grade class, but I've been involved with kindergarten through high school. Did you say what you liked most about it? Um, I liked really trying to catch the imagination of the, of the students and uh, really trying to show them how interesting science can be. What is the rarest animal in the Buck Sledge Community Forest? The rarest animal has been seen here fairly recently, as, as, as recently as 2016, I think, is the peregrine falcon, when you talk about animals. And peregrine falcons were affected by two things. Mostly, they, they were affected by um, an herbicide called DDT or insecticide called DDT. And it in, 
it affected bald eagles. So we also have a bald eagle nest on North Pond that's not right in the buck sledge, but buck sledge can look down on the eagle's nest. But the DDT got concentrated in the in the, the hawks and eagles and owls um, and made their eggs really fragile. And so their population was nearly wiped out. Um, eagles have come back, and, but the peregrine falcons are, are still fairly rare. Um, they're the fastest birds around, um, but they also only have certain places where they like to nest. And the ledges are a good place for them to nest. And since we have several different ledges, um, it was a good habitat for them. Next. What is your favorite part of helping with the sledge and why? I think the favorite thing about buck sledge is, is because it's got so many different unique features, it's trying to figure out why those features exist in, in buck sledge and trying to get it learned deeply about what, how that works. Like right now, there's one place, there's a lot of rare plants because the soil is less acid. And I'm not exactly sure what causes it to be less acid, but because it's less acid, we have some plants like there's a rare plant, which is a sedge, which lives in wet ground. And it's the only place in the whole state of Maine where it's found. Um, it called? It's called the, the a burr rush. Um, it's a burr rush sedge, I, I believe. Um, and then there's some other, other unique species that live in that area that don't live in the areas, the other areas because most of the soils aren't that particular type. Um, the other thing I like, like most about it is that people really like buck sledge. And I like seeing all the people that are coming to visit and hike on the trails and people are taking walks around there. And so a lot of people are really involved in, in taking care of buck sledge and they learn a lot from it. What is the um, what are different jobs involved with the Buck Sledge project? There's actually quite a few. Starting with kids, we've had, had lots of kids involved in in um, helping us build trails. Also, we're we're hoping because it's connected to the Woodstock School now, we're hoping to get kids involved in, in learning and studying the environment. Um, and so kids can play a big role in, in the pro property. Uh, we're gonna get teachers involved and seeing how the teachers can, can help teach kids on this, on this particular land. To help protect it, we need wildlife biologists, foresters, and committees of, of residents for the town of Woodstock, because this is going to belong to the town of Woodstock as a community forest to help guide how to pr protect these resources to go into the future. Um, we have to write grants because a lot of the funds are um, coming from grants to, uh, to pay for this process. And also people to go out and interview people and, and uh, get them to donate money. So that's just a lot of them. There's a lot of different people involved with a lot of different levels. Next question. Uh, what keeps you motivated to continue working on Buck Sledge after all is said? Well, I think because it, it, it remains to be one of the most unique areas in the town of Woodstock. Also, over time, more and more people have gotten involved and then when you've got lots of people involved, that kind of creates a lot of excitement as well. Also, once you start something, you want to see it all the way to the end. So the first time around, we didn't, we got lots of people interested, but didn't quite, weren't able to purchase it. But we continue on um, because we, we thought, well, we could get people on the land with trails that would help it. So we did stuff in trails. And then uh, we, this opportunity came along to get a grant again, and it was the seller was had finished using it uh, for logging, 
um, and he was willing to sell. So uh, we just keep working at it until uh, it becomes a reality. We want to see something through all the way to the end. Let's Any other questions? Well, they got other um, I have another question about those um, rare and endangered plants. Yeah. It ties back to, um, there's this plant, which is really rare. Do you have lady slippers on the buff sledge? There's no lady slippers that I know of on buff sledge. They like uh, really, really moist ground. Although there's a whole section near the Woodstock school that has a lot of lady, lady slippers. And that's on a nature trail that I, developed when my kids were in Woodstock school. Um, there are the rare plants, this uh, enriched forest tend to be at the bottom of the ledges. And there's a couple of things going on. One is you get soils built up. The soils are pretty thin because it's on rock, but here's the ledge. So the soils up here tend to fall down and end up at the bottom of the ledge. So the places near the bottom ledge have thicker layers of soil than other places. That might be one factor why the soils in that are particularly rich for these kind of things. But I'm also trying to figure, the soils also come from broken down rocks. And I'm not sure why the rocks in this area, most of the rocks in this area normally create acid soils. I'm not sure why this one produces soils that are less acid. So it's, it's kind of a mystery at this point, but the, and, and because it's got that unique soils, we end up with unique vegetation. The, the brushes or the sedges and some different other things that like to live in not so acid soil. I have to ask that one because I have a couple of leaf slippers on my property back at my house. There's like a uh, grove of them. They'll come up in spring. They're, so really, they're really pretty. The white ones, the pink ones, the purple ones. Sure, yeah. It's good, it's good to look around and see what you can find. What is climate change and how does climate change affect buck sledge? Climate change is um, when CO2 levels and other greenhouse gases get to such a level um, that it starts to warm up the environment or change the climate. Because normally, like plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen and then animals take the oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. Normally there's a balance, but, but besides those natural forms of the carbon dioxide going in and out, we've also been using lots and lots of fossil fuels, oil that's been buried in the ground for year, thousands of years. And by using that, we're creating carbon dioxide that's not being absorbed as quickly as it's being produced. So we build up the carbon dioxide in the air and the carbon dioxide acts kind of like a blanket. So sunlight comes in and helps hold the temperatures in. And because of that, it's changing all the different weather patterns. Um, some places you're getting more warming, some places you're getting a lot more severe weather. Like we've had a lot more rain. Some places they had a lot more rain and we actually had a severe drought this, this last year and we're still somewhat drought conditions. So it's trying to reduce those carbon dioxide in the air so it doesn't affect the climate. Because if we, if, if we change the climate, we won't have the kind of plants that we live around here. We have, we'll have the kind of plants that live in Maryland and, kind of, and they're, they'll be placed in the United States where the sea level gets so high that, that um, people won't be able to live there because it'll be flooded out. We'll also get some places where it's too hot um, and then other places where it might be too dry or too wet. So climate change can have a big impact on the area. One of the resources I, I gave you, uh, the movie 2040, talks about how it's not an insolvable problem. There are things you can do now that can affect the climate in the future. And if we, do, if we act soon enough now, we can make it so it won't be a problem. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, do you like your job? Why or why not? What do you like and or, and or dislike about your job? 
I, I really enjoyed my, my teaching jobs, um, especially the ones at the, the Auburn, Auburn School District, because one, I got to work with lots of kids, in lots of different uh, situations. They came to me for field trips, and you know how much fun, fun field trips are. So I got to be the fun teacher all the time. Um, also, um, in teaching about science, and especially the environment, you're doing something that's important. Um, protecting the environment affects everybody, and, and we really need, need to protect it and take care of it. Um, so I used to talk, show people when I worked for soil and water conservation, where all their food and all their materials come from soils, water, and air. I used to ask the question, um, what'd you have for, how'd you like the soil you had for lunch or for breakfast this morning? Did anyone have soil for breakfast? I mean, I may have tripped and ate some, but I eat <laughs> Not directly. Bye. Like <laughs> yeah. Not directly, but indirectly, everything you eat comes back to soils. Like say, for instance, you had, had um, some cereal. What cereal come from? Plants. Plants. Yeah, like wheat, rice, and things like that. And the plants, where do they get their oh, materials water. from? From yeah. water, soil. So if you had cereal this morning, you were eating reprocessed soil. And everything you're going to have tonight for supper will come from soil. So you can go home tomorrow, tonight, and say, "Mom, Dad, I know exactly what we're going to have for supper tonight," and you're going to have what? But if we're having a cheeseburger, well, I, I raise you this. or just hamburger. <laughs> I raise you this. How does that soil, you know, plants, but how do plants grow from the sun? You just eat sun rays all the time. Because then the cows eat the grass and then you eat the hamburger or you eat the grass, which is grown from the sun. Ooh, yeah, right. ooh. Sun provides the energy, but the materials come from the soil, water, or air. Ooh, interesting. So it's a combination of the sun and the soils. Mm. Fantastic. Any any other questions y'all have that you still had on your list? Yeah. I think there was one that I know uh, I really thought was a great question to end with. Um, so I'll just stop with that one. And then when I'm when we're done with this question, folks, we are going to do our uh, our exit ticket, which is again is. What is one interesting thing that you heard or learned about in this presentation? And what's one question that you still have about either Buff Sledge or anything related to environmental health? And that is gonna be something we're gonna do in just a couple of minutes. But this last question I thought was really well thought out and um, who knows how you're gonna answer it, Jim. So the question is, why do you care so much about the community? Well, because I'm part of the community. And just like why I, why I care about the environment, because I'm part of the environment. And if we don't take care of it, it not only affects the plants and animals out there, but it affects us too. Um, and I think part of the reason we take care of the environment and take care of our community is because we're part of it and it affects us. So we want to make a positive effect on it. Well, thank you. That was excellent. I think that's a great way to end, Jim. What do we say to Jim, everybody? Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Jim. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the recording, but we will still have you around if kids want to ask more questions of Jim as you start your exit ticket. We'll do that. But thank you so much again, Jim, for visiting our class. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. So 